Well, Pixar Palooza is over, but Inside Out 2 keeps on winning as the highest grossing animated film of all time. So we did our job. You're welcome, Inside Out 2. Cue the music. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, and welcome to a back-to-school episode of the Good Leader Podcast. We've been on break, took a little hiatus there because Pixar Palooza. Brian, welcome back to the show. You guys did it. You did it. You substituted for me, and you pushed Inside Out 2 over the top. I, I don't know that we deserve all the credit for the <laughs> a, a, a tinge of the credit, box though, office bump, sure. but... I mean, it was a box office month, though. It was. It I really mean, was. You know, there's all this talk about nobody goes to the movies anymore and, and numbers are down. And then, hey, Good Leader Podcast starts talking about Pixar. And guess what? Bump. Movies are back. <laughs> what about, don't you think, Jess? Yeah, I mean, they can't prove that it didn't happen. That's right. So. Well, no, absolutely not. So thank you, loyal listeners. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, if we get a check from Pixar, we'll let everybody know and we'll share the wealth. We will share the wealth. If Pixar cuts us a check, we will share the wealth with every loyal listener out there. Speaking of loyal listeners, Appreciate our loyal podcast crew here. Uh, 75% of the last podcast of the Pixar Palooza is here with us today. So welcome back, Jess, or as I like to say, new and improved limb. Hello, how are you? Mm. You've never said that, but hi, I'm, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the first time I've had the chance. You're now in the, That's uh, true. You're in, in the uh, producer chair. How does that feel? It feels uh, overwhelming, first and foremost, but also kind of cool. I feel yeah. like I have control you got the of everything. Power. So, so all of the musical drops, all of the cues, all that, that's you, you know? You, all of you the are, mess ups. You yep. are the center uh, on the football field. Nothing happens without you. You know, everybody talks about the quarterback. Nice. I would say for this podcast, uh, I'm, I'm the quarterback. You know what I'm saying? I, I think. Uh, of course launch? you would. I, yeah. I'm, that's fine. In a technical set. I'm thinking yeah, technically that's speaking. Fine. Like, I'm, <laughs> You're directing what's happening. That's but fine. She's if I'm ball. using a football <laughs> analogy, I, I do. I, what am, I, Absolutely. am I the coach? Go ahead, Ange. You know football. Um, I think you're like the left tackle. I was thinking more like wide receiver. <laughs> you're wide receiver? Well. Okay. I can go with that. Yeah. It depends on the episode. Yeah. yeah but, but yeah. In general. That's well, you know. because you I think I, generally. Some, some episodes you quarterback. I would say, yeah, say that. Some episodes I, you quarterback. I did initially think of you more of the coach side. But mm -hmm. then I was like, well, then who would quarterback be? So then I. Yeah. I think we all, I think we all have to be players for the analogy to yeah. work. Okay. 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 If bigger. we're all players. If we're all players. You're either Brian's the fullback. I was I was gonna say I'm the yeah. fullback from the 49ers. Really? I don't want to butcher his last name. Juice. Oh, uh, with the K. Yep. His wife the, is his the wife designer. is the designer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm considering. His wife is more famous you know, than he is. At this point, hundred percent. I feel like. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. I kind of more so want to be the running back. Actually, I'm changing my position. You can. You can. Yeah. This is not, now. Speaking now, this is tryouts. Hey, no, it's I'm, back to I'm school. The fullback situation. Back to school. You know. It's a new year. You get to decide. I'm gonna go out for the team, coach. I'd like to play a little running back. Yeah, that's you want to be running back. Yeah, if you're a running back, I think you'd be you'd be a three down back. I'll give you that. You'd be a three down bell mm. cow over there. Mm. That's impressive. Why yeah. am I David suddenly Montgomery hearing bell positions I've never heard there. of before? That's a great name. Running yeah. back, that's a three the down bell cow the for bell on three cow. down, like three down back. What is that? Onch. like a, <laughs> <laughs> a three, it means on first down, second down, and third down. Typically on third down, it is a passing down. Mm -hmm. So a three down back is a versatile utility player that can run the ball and also catch passes yeah that's They're why i was like I'm highly, running back yeah highly valuable player three down Just back kind of where you Got want it. me and then the secondary nickname if you do have a running back that takes all three downs and carries the ball a lot they're the bell cow of the offense Correct. which i really like that on it's the bell great, cow it's a higher great name. as wow. a nickname that's a great, great nickname, nickname. All right, I don't know and what I Jess, you're the there. center. You're the center, snapping it. <laughs> hey, all of this stuff leads me to a game because we are back to school. And yes, every year I'd go back telling the coach, "Coach, I think I'd like to play this position." Never got my wish, but I always tried. So <laughs> just like you, this school year, did I'm going to give you a chance. Football? Wainwright, yeah, <laughs> Wainwright did not have football. Okay. Believe it or not, K through eight school, rural Oklahoma, go Bulldogs. <laughs> no, we had uh, a basketball team okay. and an infamous once a year track day. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Not a track day. Heard about the track day. I have got a story that impacted, that impacted my life. But I have a back-to-school game for you. The first one to three points wins. You're playing individually. These are the top ten back-to-school items for kindergarten through second graders. Ooh. Oh, kindergarten through second graders. And this is from, this is from yep, kindergarten yeah, And I might have a competitive grade. advantage here. You do. You do. You, you do. do. How old are your Just kiddos on? This. If you don't mind sharing for the pod. How old are your kiddos?
K through second, back to school supply list. If you get okay. it, you get a point. First one to three points wins. Jess, Ooh. you have the board. You have control. Uh, Guess wow. a back to school item for kindergarten through second grader. Markers. Markers. Washable markers coming in at number four. That's a point. Nice. Brian, nice. on just handicapped, uh, so you're going last. Okay, you're the, that's you're the fine. Advantage, that's so yeah. that's fine. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, crayons, crayons, not making the list. This is a 2024 list. Markers it's made the hard. list. Crayons, not. is that I crazy? Know. It's hard. Crayons are yeah. the only thing in the pack. I didn't know it either, yeah. Brian. I didn't know it either. You're telling me kids aren't buying the 64 count with the sharpener on the back anymore? Well, yeah. I never was. Okay, you want to talk about eight count Jared? Over That's here. crazy. I was jealous. Wow, sixty four Jeff Kaufman. Oh, yeah. Jeff Kaufman with the his sharpener big back. in the back the, of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, Y'all know so I had the one with the sharpener. You the did. big box. Oh, you yeah. would. Oh man, those were awesome. That was. Yeah. I mean, you're king of the playground right there. I just used or the queen. other people's. Yeah, you used the other people's. Yeah, I just had the eight pack. Sincerely, yeah. my mom bought an eight pack. Yeah. yeah, you guys even know they existed. It's all yeah. you need. Absolutely, it's all you need. They started having to specifically say like sixty four pack of crayons, but yeah, evidently crayons not wow. a thing. I will say this: they're still wow. a thing in the homeschool community. We're still crayons as they should be. All right, Aunt, give me a guess. <laughs> um, glue sticks. Glue sticks got to be on the list, surely. Glue stick coming in number seven. <sighs> Point. Jess, give me something else. Kleenex. Wow, that is a great answer. It did not make the list. It should have, though. I'm, I would have said that. Honestly, yeah. I would have said that. I'm, wow. I'm going to give you a ghost point for that because it's such a phenomenal answer. Thank yeah. you. So wow. Go ahead, Brian. Um, a ruler. A ruler. You may be a little young, buddy. You may be coming in a little <laughs> young. I, I, I'm assuming you don't need a ruler. Yeah, Second graders aren't think, using I don't rulers think a ruler is going to be no, on there. No ruler. Sorry. Sorry. Let's go wow. a few more rounds of the system. What do you, what we do you got? No crayons, no rulers. <laughs> yeah. That's what's wrong with the country. Play Doh. Come on. That. That should be a presidential <laughs> candidate's complete pa- platform. If Trump or Harris came out and was pro crayon, sway my vote. Yeah, sway my me. vote right now. You got me on it. <laughs> yeah, seriously. On, give me a guess. Plato. Plato. Hmm. No, not way. on the list. Right. Okay, no. Wow, that should be. Man. It's on all of TPS's list, man. Really? Yeah, you we have, have to buy. We have to buy Play-Doh? eight of them. Yeah. Whoa. I that's think that's a tall. Lot four. Of fancy. Four that sounds count. really uppity to me. Let me tell you about a. Public school system, love you guys so much. That is not uppity. <laughs> it is TPS. <laughs> if we want to go the least uppity. <laughs> wow. All right, give me wow, a guess. Wow, I'm surprised there it's not some, on there. Gosh, y'all are making the No, there's hard. others. There's there basic. Are, there's basic. There's some okay. basic things. Yeah. I'm ready to guess disinfectant wipes. Uh, nope. No wipes. No wipes. Although, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. These Brian, are all good okay. guesses. These are uh, all great guesses so far. Only one bad like guess. A, uh, like a utensil box. I don't know what you call that. Pencil box. A pencil box. Yeah, like a pencil box. It's not on the list. I think that goes without saying. I think that's one of those like, yeah. you, you, you know, you got to carry it in something. Brian, wow. you're not yeah. doing too well. I've really got to This is good prep because, you know, in a few years, you're going to be here. On, pencils. Pencils, number one. Pencils. Come on, we got to have pencils. I would be stressed like, Kindergartner with a pencil? What? Yeah, well, they got it right. They, they got it right. You're writing your name. You're writing your ABCs. <laughs> That's what the markers and you are for. You ain't got a crayon anymore. <laughs> All right, Jess, what do you got? I don't know if they would be separate, but I want to say for it. I want to say folders, but I don't know if binders is like not on the list. Not folders list. or binders? That'd be more like third, fourth grade, mm. fifth, sixth. Yeah, you're a little young here. They don't organize stuff yeah. in the second so grade. So did she get two guesses? <laughs> was that two guesses? Folders and binders? Not on well. The list? I neither were on the list. Okay, that's what I was asking. That's what I was asking. Are both? All right. Did you not Brian, get a couple ahead. things? If they have pencils, they have. We're to gonna have go erasers. Erasers on the list. Come on, I'll take a point. There you go. That's a point. Are you? We're heating up. Two. We're heating up. I am. So you can win the game right here. If you get one, it's the first one to three. So if Ange gets one, and there are some very paper, very guessable things. Paper. Dang Number it. 10. Wow. Wide rule no book was my next I know. Specifically. If you were going to ask me specific, no I was going to go wide one. rule. Coming in. Number one was pencils. Number two, pencil grips. Pencil grips. Oh, wow. Not, not seen those yeah. in I, my time. Well, back in my day, we had fat pencils. I don't think they do yeah. that so much anymore. No, I haven't seen those much seen anymore. Those we have those too. Pencils? Yeah. They're like wow. big. The, yeah. Wow. <laughs> like a fat pencil. I just only remember buying like the four foot pencil from the book. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the girth. The, the diameter of the yeah. pencil. Yeah, it was like no, thick, a, like a thicker yeah. pencil. pencil. Yes. Wow. Okay. All yes. Right. All right, we're going to keep going. Dry erase markers and whiteboard. <laughs> they have Wait. to provide their own Yeah, they do. Board. Like a small that, one? That's actually true. Thing. Yeah, that's a good what? one. This is where we've come. It's an eraser. And an eraser. It's and like an eraser. provide your own little dry. This is true story. Yeah, and This an is eraser. like provide your own little dry erase board so that when you're when they're practicing, wow. they're, they're yeah. answering on dry erase board. Wow. And markers. Economically, it makes sense. Markers. More environmentally yeah. healthy. Yes, I see it, wow. but it's not. Okay, there you go. See? All right. Wow. Got to change with the times here, Brian. Washable markers, you got. You missed pencil sharpener. You got erasers, glue stick. You missed scissors, people. I was going to get scissors. They're that giving scissors to scissors. under second Absolutely. grade? The kid scissors. You got kid scissors. Yeah, we can like tell who's had a first grader. Okay, I'm like, wow. Okay, I'm like, I... well, they're not like 
you know, no. three. And then colored <laughs> pencils. Missed out on colored I pencils. I almost said colored pencils, Also called too. fancy crayons. Yeah, fancy yeah. crayons. Fancy crayons. Yeah. Ridiculous. All right. Hey, if you are a back-to-school to parent, there are some great tips from this great website. Shout out where shout outs are due. Scholarwithin.com. They give not only the top things your student needs for success, but they give you parents five quick steps to a successful school year. We're going to go to that and then go to a break, and then we're going to hear a great story from Brian. Number one step is set up your learning area in your home with the supplies you'll need. Bell Cow, you done that? Set up your learning area in your home with the supplies you'll need. Wait, I don't have a that learning area. You don't have, okay, strike one. All right, number two. <laughs> like, what are you visit about? the school a week or even a day or two before school starts. This will help your kids remember that they are part of a larger learning community. We had to do, yeah, we had to meet the teacher yesterday. All right, that's yeah. a point for Ange. There you go. Have your kids set up their first week of school schedule, including homework time, practice times for sports, etc. Yeah, my first grader is not creating his schedule, but he strike we do two, have a schedule. Strike two, according to Scholar Within. 6.30 every night. They, yeah, they give you homework in preschool. No. What? Homework. Not a joke. Get out of here. He was Get doing, out yeah, of here he with had that. to write his little name, all these little things. And Ugh. let me tell you. Tell us. Tell us. That's what, I want to share something. Step up to the platform. Issuing homework to preschoolers, I'd argue even kindergarten, is just homework for the parents. It's ridiculous. The amount well, of, of cutout and glue John and I have been like, all right, yeah, put, no, that goes there. I've had to give... Liam was in kindergarten, and I had to give his homework to John. I was like, I I do not know how to do this. It was kindergarten homework. Well, and maybe it's because you didn't do homework when you were in kindergarten. It, I don't know, but John out. has done more homework in our house <laughs> than Poor Liam John. or I. Wow. John is having to revisit. He's like Billy Madison. He's going through every grade again. Number four, have your kids plan what they will wear the night before school. Oh, Check. We did You're that, doing pretty yeah. well on this, Ange. And finally, plan what you'd like your kids to eat for lunch. Plan for healthy snacks and let them help create lunch the night before. Yeah, you know we did mm. big, nice. big on the healthy stuff. Jess, how'd you do? You did pretty well. Crush it. <laughs> Love it. All right. Mm -hmm. When we get back from the break, we're going to talk about all of the business do's and don'ts and things we've learned, starting with Brian Harris. Let's go to break. Didn't hear us? Missing us? That's how you must feel with us not being at your workshops. If you want to book us today, go to ps.company slash workshop. Hit the ham horn with that one. Give me something. Crush Give me the applause. The Give me something. Wow. Man, the studio <laughs> audience going crazy for on on that one. Wow. Unscripted, unplanned, impromptu. If you I was have, like, they are really not going to do it. If you have a gaping hole in your <laughs> learning leadership <laughs> ecosystem, then you need to fill it with paradigm shift. Great job, Anj. Brian, this month is National Small Business Month. And so all month, we're going to be talking about small business development learning. We talk about organizational health. It's really not Small Business Month. That was in May, but we missed it. So I thought we'd catch up right here in August. <laughs> No so, better time than the present. No better time than now. We were we were in Pixar Palooza in May, so we tabled it till August. Brian, you have a great story of uh, some things that we want to learn about in terms of, you know, growing and investing in people, all the things we talk about, but maybe from a smaller company's perspective and some things that you picked up. So tell us your story. Yeah, absolutely. So if you if you rewind approximately six years ago, uh, <laughs> I had just graduated college and I was stepping into the workforce at Paradigm Shift for the very first time. And Jared, you invited me to go to a conference with you all. And there were six of us at this conference. Five of us? Five of us at the conference, I think. Five. Um, there are five of us at this conference. I was brand new. Literally, first day on the job is this conference. And I have no idea what to expect. I have no idea what's going on. I know what we do because I've been a facilitator for a few years prior to this. So I know what we're doing and why we're at this conference and the people that we're trying to sell this product to. Um, and the first break hits at this conference. If you've ever been to a conference, you know that breaks are insanely busy at these conferences. Anytime there's an exhibitor break, people just flood the booth Huge. and there's people everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and the first time it happens, we're split up amongst the booth. Me and, uh, another one of our coworkers, Kyle, you've all met him. Uh, Kyle, <laughs> me and Kyle are on one side of the booth and Jared is on the other side of the booth and I'm sitting around and the break is happening and I see a lot of people, but there's no one talking to Kyle and I. And I was like, well, this is kind of disheartening. And I look at Kyle. And when I look at Kyle, I see past him. And there is just a mob of probably 30 people at our booth. And I'm like, what in the world is happening? And about that time, Jared stands up on a chair and is talking to all 30 of these people <laughs> at our booth. And I was like, this is the 
craziest thing I've ever seen. No one, me and Kyle are very obviously standing here to be able to talk to. And Jared has 30 people around him, surrounding him to talk about paradigm shift. They know Jared, they've seen Jared and they've gotten to know Jared over the few years. Um, and when I saw that from a, from a new employee perspective, it, it did two things. One, it, I was honestly just floored. I didn't really know what to say in the moment, but it also put just a piece of me and in my mind that, that's where I want to be at conferences. I want to be able to do that. I want to take somebody new to a conference with me and everybody's talking to me and coming up to me. So if you come back to the present, we just got back from the same conference this past summer and every single break, I was surrounded by people that I knew. Not one of us was overpowering the other, but every single break that was happening, I was surrounded by five to 10 people on every break. And all of us were that way. Um, so just being able to, for me, the way that I viewed that from your perspective, Jared, was really setting setting the example and passing on that knowledge without even intentionally doing it. Um, and I think you mastered that really well, and you did a great job of it in that moment. And afterwards, when I asked you, I was like, how in the world did you do? How did you have that many people around you? And you were like, I just did. Like, I don't really know how I did it. Um, and I know you have some more insight towards that. But for me, I saw that as a new employee, and I was like, wow, that – that's where I want to be at conferences. And this last past summer, I felt myself in that moment at that conference six years later, six years down the road from the initial experience of that. <laughs> well, I appreciate you sharing that story because it reveals a few things as we talk, especially to small business owners. But this could go for really any leader of any elk, especially if you have something over which you are expected to build or grow. I would think these lessons apply, you know, if you're in sales or if you're a pastor at a church or really you're in an organization that you're, you know, or your job is to build a platform or build exposure. If you're, if you're in a leadership position that has some growth expectancy, I think the lessons today apply. And the first one, Brian, is the truth. And I've just got a handful of these, but you're right. I said, I don't know. <laughs> They're like, how did you do that? You had so many people in your answering questions. Your heart was in the right place. And you and Kyle were standing there ready, willing, and able but it's like, man, no one is going to. They're all flocking over to me. Why? And I really didn't know. But that's my first lesson is, especially when you are a founder or you've done something for a long time, you don't know what you don't know. And in not knowing what you don't know, you don't know how to train. You don't know how. So you have to give yourself opportunities for feedback and just reflection. And I use the term reflection there specifically because that experience wasn't me training you, quote unquote, but it was me seeing the reflection of like, okay, I'm over here and seeing this. Well, how do we need to change that? What have I done to build these relationships to get that response? And how then can I train it? So it's okay to not know something. But for many of us, especially when we are either so, either so involved in something that it's hard for us to see outside of ourselves or pretty naturally good at something. I think some people, you might have started a business or got into something or found the role that you did because you're pretty naturally good at something. But then that natural, as you're trying to build it, that natural giftedness or those natural abilities don't translate to everyone. And so your answer, like at that moment was like, I don't know, I just did it. Well, that's terrible training. And it's okay to say that the first time. It might be okay to say that even the second time. I'm still not sure. But you've got to do the harder work of asking yourself, what am I doing? How can I train this? How can I grow it? So that's the first thing. You don't know what you don't know, and that's okay. But it's not okay to stay there. Seek ways to understand more about yourself and more about your business and more about your opportunities that you may not realize. Number two, I love that Brian shared this idea of the most recent conference we attended, the exact same conference, just six years later. He has actually found himself in the position that he sought six years earlier. And every single break, every single uh, opportunity, people are coming up to you and you're going to people and you have a lot of relationships. And this is for people that I know, and we do a lot of this. I mean, we talk about an A-track to emoji. We do a lot of cross-generational talk. You look at all the statistics. We live in a very microwave society. We're staying in, in our, our roles in a shorter time. We want to move on. We're always, and I think some of it is we just have a fascination with something new or something different. So it's like, you know, this job is fine. I like it, but I want to try something new. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there's nothing, anything wrong with that inherently, but I think we are losing the... Um, perspective of some things just take time. <laughs> so, you know, and, and in that, what I learned was, wow, how do you get to that place? Hey, sometimes it's just the time that I've been involved in this organization or involved in this business sector. And I've just built those relationships over time. So my second lesson is give yourself the space and time to build the necessary relationships. You show up at the conference the first year and you're going like, I don't know anybody. 
cool. You show up the second year and be like, well, I kind of know people, but I'm still not making the sales I want or doing the, you know, we're not hitting the numbers we wanted to. I guess I'm just going to quit. I'm going to move on. I'm going to give up. Maybe not. <laughs> you know, you could just be one more conference away, one year away from building those. And, and every organization is different. Every business sector is different, but nothing can replace experience. And so giving yourself permission to build over time is something that I think we're losing societally. And I'm not even saying it's wrong. What I am saying is that, man, sometimes you go, I've been in this place for four years. What if I was here eight? What if I was here 10? What if I stayed in this exact same position? There was a great, uh, a great story um, that I heard from an entrepreneur who was sitting next to a gentleman who had built a gigantic business. And she was asking him, it was like, it's like on an airplane. She was asking him, how did you do this? And he said, well, imagine, he said, imagine the compound interest within your business that you would develop if you only focused on one thing for 60 years. Mm -hmm. If you just focused on one thing for 60 years, how good at that one thing do you think you could be? Mm -hmm. She's like, well, fantastic. And he's like, that's what I've done. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm 80. I've, been, I've had my business for 60 years. That's why I'm seeing the success that I have. Man, but even as I say that, isn't it tough to think of doing something for 60 years? <laughs> right? Yeah. It's tough, it's right, Jess? It's like, wow, sick, the rest of my life. So it's this weird balance that we're in, I know. But the lessons that I've learned is I wish, I wish even back then, I wish I would have given my impatience the answer of time. Mm -hmm. Wow, I, I want to go faster. I want to be doing more. I wish we were doing more. Calm down. Give yourself time. And in five years, the difference in where you'll be in five years versus one year is ridiculously tremendous. Mm -hmm. But we don't think like that. Yeah. One more here, and then uh, we'll wrap it up on the training issue, is I do think exposure as training is underrated. Just, mm -hmm. hey, go. what are you going to do with this guy? Like at that time, you weren't even in sales. You weren't, it was just, hey, this would be good for you. Go yeah. to this conference. Yeah. What do you want me to do? And I was like, just hang out at the booth with me. Answer the questions you know. If you don't, if you don't know the answer, I'll be right there. Bring and just the exposure. Just put it. So I think one thing that we can, and maybe this helps with my my number two thought, was if you have people in your organization that are interested in something else, give them some exposure. You know, like, hey, try this. Go to this conference. If you have someone who, for example, I don't know if I want to be in sales or not. Well, why don't you go to the sales conference and just check it out? Oh, okay. Well, why don't you, you know, shadow me for a day or or do some of these things? And I think that exposure is training is underrated. And the larger you get, the more difficult it is to do. I can totally see that because you move from generalists to specialists. But I think even in understanding what other departments are doing and wow, what problems are you doing? Even if it was just like, well, what's your job today? You're going to shadow the ops team or you're going to shadow a facilitator for us, our world. You're going to go on this event and do those things. Because I think that the cycle of training should be train, do, correct. Train a little bit, have them do it, and then correct. Mm -hmm. but just showing up and exposure, just letting them do some stuff with no ramifications, I mm -hmm. think is highly underrated. Mm -hmm. So those are my quick takeaways from today as Brian and I were reflecting on some lessons that we've learned, especially as we honor, you know, small business month every single May and it's August. <laughs> but if you're out there, all those small business owners, all of those leaders, if you're expected to build or grow something, I would encourage you to think about these things and let us know your thoughts. Jess, where can they follow us? On all of the you guys uh, socials. You can follow all of our socials at Paradigm Shift Leadership. So check us out. Follow along. Do great things. Give yourself some patience and be a good leader.